like somebody told me he said what breakfast is your favorite that becomes your ethic of who you are uh, like i can eat only south indian breakfast wherever i am in the world really yeah i just have to like i can just pass a few days with like egg and toast on this rubbish but huh. i have to eat it uske baad kya chahiye idli yeah, dosa yeah yeah i eat, like even bombay eat like dosa vada and stuff like that so <laughs> so i feel like somewhere your root is what makes you who you are and yeah. uh, the more rooted you are the larger the audience you can understand and, and cater to Rana it is so wonderful to have you on now binging thank you i just that i don't binge that much <laughs> uh, i wish i had time to binge a lot more huh. than what i do but thank you for having me listen you might not binge but you made a very splashy streaming debut this year yes <laughs> rana i do drops in march first week or second week of april season 2 is announced yes thankful very very amazing yeah well for me it was like it was a pandemic idea really mm. that started off and it starts off with fomo in some ways where we just feel like we're not doing cinema but there's so many people going to work right and we're watching so much on streaming and we said okay how do we get into working on a a show a long form and we realized none of us in, in the office had a sense of what long form means because we only make films and we understand listening to stories also like film uh we understand reading it like film now the first time when we got into reading this this reading took a week i'm like how do you make a judgment on what you <laughs> decided in the course of the week right in every sense i felt like a debut after a very long time like when you have a first feeling where you don't remember continuity because you only your brain remembers only 3 hours of things so like we have a sense of continuity that's that's how we've been programmed to work here i was just going blank for a large part like it took me like 30 days of shoot to figure out oh this is where things are making sense speaking of commercial one of the things and i i know you're in and out of mumbai a lot but i don't know if you've heard all the conversations that are happening in the last i would say like 2 years about the death of superstardom in hindi cinema how there will not be another generation like the khans like this was it but i'm looking at the south it's not true at all i mean it's bigger than biggest stars what is the difference rana why is the death of stardom being talked about here but not there they didn't watch the last two shahrukh khan films before having this conversation <laughs> they didn't right. watch gadar either while having this conversation Nick, they're so they think <laughs> that generation ke baad ki now the, the stars will I'm not saying, have it you see like uh, like many people speak to me uh, as of gadar was a surprise right hmm. Uh, but the minute that film was launched or we saw the trailer we knew that will create some impact yeah because there's no other other actor who can do what sunny deol does impossible like in today's generation yeah. right uh and what is that extreme stardom it means their cinema can cater to a lot of people it's not uh, india one but it is india 1 2 3 wherever you go across people like that right mm-hmm. and that's very hard to get and what happens is in today's society we are also we grow up in a different manner where uh, like our schooling systems are different where uh, we're still more in some echo chambers of our own whether it's our schooling our office life our everyday friends our interaction right but it's much more diverse in uh, and as the city gets bigger it usually gets smaller and smaller mm. like i see that like if you leave mumbai and you go to america it gets even smaller because everything is a certain niche and you subscribe to a certain affiliation that you have so you are with people that like the cinema that you like uh, but the time the stars were actually made and that's more true in telugu uh, or any of the south indian states for that matter the diverseness is much much higher uh, for like english is not our first language that we speak at all like very rarely did, do we do interviews in english and here we don't it's very rarely yeah. do the other way around right yeah. so i think it's uh making sure like language like there's no uh entry barrier to language there is no entry barrier to you're saying in the south industries yeah in most of them and yeah. and i don't know like it's not just the industries i feel even them as cities hmm. like 
the friends group that I built in Hyderabad or in Chennai is very, very different from the friends group that I have in Bombay. In what way? Uh, whether it's exposure, uh, say more global exposure in Bombay and uh, lesser inclination to know uh, rooted things mm. because sometimes they are not as cool if not presented right. Yeah. See, if uh, if I didn't learn Telugu in school, I didn't, I wouldn't know the coolness of the poets in Telugu, right? But here, it, that's it's not the other yeah. way around. You're because English is such a standardized language. You pick the artists of the West. Your your influence is very different. Uh, so I think that's that's where I see the difference. Where the more people you can understand, the more you can interact with. Hmm. You know, Rana, you, and I've never heard anyone else point this out. I remember you said that in, on a Telugu film set, the film is of course Telugu, the language is Telugu, the yes. script is Telugu. Yes. Right? On a Hindi film set, a lot of the language of communication is English. Yes. And the script is sometimes Roman English. Yeah. Because they don't, they can't read Hindi. Right? Do you think See, this makes a difference? I don't know difference? if they can't read or if it's just not given sometimes, right? Maybe. See, Maybe. Unless like Mr. Bachchan insists. See, there in Telugu, it's, it, you have to insist for an English version. Right. It's for the actors that are but not from Telugu. But Do you think this makes a difference? Is there a oh, loss? Oh, huge. I think really? There, I'm sure there is, right? Uh, see, that's the power of the region. Hmm. Like, that's the, that's home. That's who you are, right? Uh, the way you grow up, what your food is. Like somebody told me, he said, what breakfast is your favorite? that becomes your ethic of who you are. Uh, like, I can eat only South Indian breakfast wherever I am in the world. Really? Yeah, I just have to. Like, I can just pass a few days with like, egg and toast on this rubbish, but huh. I have to eat Uska dosa. Kya yeah, dosa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I eat, like, even in Bombay, I eat like dosa and stuff like that. So, <laughs> so I feel like somewhere your root is what makes you who you are. And yeah. uh, the more rooted you are, the larger the audience you can understand and, and cater to. So, in a sense, maybe this loss of of sort of just whatever loss yeah. there is in this language actually translates to how well the film connects in some ways i think so yeah and uh, like there was some, like i remember there was uh, many years ago there was a film called delhi belly mm. that was made all english a very successful film i just didn't understand why people didn't make any more films like that yeah nobody actually green lights them nobody commissions them like Take for English an example. I feel like English can become a different industry in India. Yeah. We are more English speakers than anywhere on the planet. Now, which means we are bigger than Hollywood. We are bigger than everybody. Just purely English speaking. Correct. And that can be a certain kind of it cinema. It can be a certain kind of cinema. And I think we should embrace that also. Correct. Well, you've said, Rana, that India's crouching tiger moment is near. Yes. What you're saying basically is that big blockbuster crossover film will come out of India. So then RRR has actually, yes, of course. you know, taken that so much more forward. Is this the conversation in living rooms in Banjara Hills? Fully. Like yeah. everybody wants to go to the furthest way. There's someone in Mars we want to show that film. Like that's how we are, right? I and love that. See, that is the, everyone's that's very ambitious. That's the Telugu film industry. Yeah, everyone's very ambitious. There's no one that has little ambition. Uh, every majority of people are willing to take risks and big risks yeah. and uh, it's pretty amazing right that that energy there when you're in film nagar you know something is going to happen today like <laughs> in some of the offices <laughs> otherwise this won't happen right just bahubali's triple r's and pushpas yeah. Yeah. just coming one after the other yeah wouldn't happen otherwise so so rana do you feel now what i love and I think that also might be a reason why there is such ambition and such, uh, such a sort of creative flourishing <laughs> in, in, in the Telugu film industry is also the camaraderie you guys have, right? The way you speak about, um, you know, um, Ram Charan, being, he went to school with you. Uh, I, I saw the show you were talking about how he would sleep behind you because yeah, you, <laughs> you were the tall man yes, yes. and he would say, yeah. come sit in front. Front and then he used to pass out in the back. <laughs> and all of you guys, you know, for RRR, you were doing, you did a marketing interview where yes, you were interviewing yes, and yes. you had nothing to do with that film. But you were so proud of it and you were, yeah. you know, you were there, right? I don't know. I mean, that doesn't not, should not, should not come naturally. We'll have an off <laughs> conversation. See, but, see, because ultimately, it's only a few people, right? Yes. It's only at any given point, it's about 50 or 60 people that are consistently doing stuff yeah. year on year. Uh, whether it's 
profitable not profitable that's all they're doing like the producers whether they're making money not making money they're still making movies so if that group of 50 60 are not consistently talking everyone's trying to reinvent the wheel uh, if say rajmouli did not share his knowledge with other filmmakers or other actors everybody would be trying to do what bahubali did yeah. and that takes very long uh, but here that you learning know, curve is too that hard it's yeah. too hard like yeah. everybody cannot take 6 years and yeah. make these films so that is passed on pretty nicely across people and i'm saying rajmouli got it from other filmmakers that were prior to him who spoke about visual effects uh, and he continues to share the same with all of us and so do all the new directors right and everyone's see india is also not such a it's not so professional where we still have to figure stuff out mm-hmm. uh, we made five big visual effects films not 500 yet mm-hmm. so i think everyone's figuring as we go things in the west will be too expensive to get to at this point but how do we slowly get to quality that is as good we've done it in the other fields and i think as hyderabad we have a reference point always when it happens or see they've built world class it companies in india mm-hmm. we've built world class medical facilities in india uh why 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 not a world class entertainment industry see because there was also a sense of we are multiple 10 industries there's a different sense of growth for us but what is that common circle is is it doesn't need language technology doesn't need language photography yeah. doesn't need language sound doesn't need language so i think all of these things are starting to get bigger and bigger for us to really form what our singular industry and sharing of knowledge and resources will be exactly it's so wonderful now you talked about technology i read that i mean i know that you got married during yeah. the pandemic yes. and of course invited very few people but i read that you gave vr streaming headsets yes. to all your friends <laughs> yes okay and yeah. your marriage was streamed live yeah yeah <laughs> this is just fabulous please share this so that like <laughs> more people can adopt it so it started with like the family somewhere bummed out that like listen it's your wedding and this is how you're getting married you're calling nobody they're like all of like kitne log aaye the some 18 people or something no 18 and that too in the office only in the studio on the where i work every day i got married there also and we said how do you give it to people everyone like okay they know they can't come but we want some part of it so my dad's like okay let's send them all a gift and get their blessings and like some kind of stuff and uh we tried this out for my sister's wedding actually ashita's wedding at one point but we couldn't stream live we had to stitch the video together it was older tech huh. and then i i read, like we dad me we were always consistently and we said okay this is something we can do when we do that he said how many headsets do we make and just before that we did the bahubali vr so we knew the vendors of <laughs> how to make google cardboard boxes all of that stuff at bulk so we just i said that's my invitation card just send it to her So everyone sitting there with these Yeah with these Oh my god So they're like parties in their houses watching and That's so So my dad fun. was talking in front of the mic little time I was walking up and I'm like that happened One last question before yes. we go on to our next segment yes, is yes. what can you tell me about your passion project Hiranya Kashyap Wow it's uh it's something that's been in the works for a while now Yeah you've and been obsessed with it for y- many years Yes and somewhere it was the first amar chitrakatha story that or the most palpable amar chitrakatha story that happened across the the universe right and its mythology needs to be retold uh, it it was told very well in the black and white era so we need to make sure we are telling it differently and better and how do we connect it to an audience from 0 to 80 which the story already has has done right uh So yes so work on that is is been going on for a, for a while and I think somewhere I feel that will that will be a film that will change the course of my life and filmmaking for a long period of time that's oh, that's really what we want to achieve with that film And before that we will see Kalki Yes yes you will see Kalki And what can you tell us about that Wow that's uh, like the first time I got jealous seeing somebody was when I went to the sets of Kalki Really? Yeah. So like I grew up like most reason why why visual effects for me was because of Star Wars. That's a film that I just loved growing up watching. Uh funny Nagi also liked growing up watching that film. So Nagi and I went to school together for a while and then he was also the AD uh, during leader and shaker in the So This is Nagashwin. Nagashwin, sorry. Uh so literally we've known each other for a really long time. We and tastes of cinema were similar. And very few people get it. 
like science fiction and all of it is not a very mainstream uh, Indian beat. And also not in the young people either. It's people who, like, see, I read Arthur C. Clarke growing up. Like, very few people read that stuff at all, right? See, we were those geeks, and when I walked into the set, I was like, shit, he's making this. Like, he's making everything that I dreamt of. And I remember I didn't talk to him that time. Back when I called him, I said, dude, I'm really jealous. I don't know why. <laughs> and he called, he said, he said, dude, only when you're jealous, I know I'm doing the right things. <laughs> How lovely. And and here, now we're part, we, we got to Comic-Con, that was... Uh, that was so fantastic. Yes, and it, I think this was the right film to get there. Yeah. Sometimes you you need the right product to say, here you go, now we've read. And it's a story from mythology into science fiction. It's really, I'm, I'm very excited about what that film will do. Cannot wait. Yes, and it's got the biggest star cast. It's got everything. Like, it's insane. Yeah, whatever you want is there in it. Absolutely. So I'm really, really waiting for Kalki to come. Very exciting and yes. with that we move on to the binge list. Now I know that growing up Rana, you watched a lot of films in theatres. Yes. Right? You said you were like a, you I know, habitual uh, theatre goer. Are you still a big watcher? Pretty much, yeah. Like, like how our watching, my watching at least has been is, I binge or watch a lot of things based on the genre that I'm doing right now. Oh, yeah. It so what the movie you're shooting, shooting impacts or, on what you're watching. Yeah, completely. And when you're doing something, like I remember during Bahubali, I watched, uh, I used to obsessively watch Game of Thrones. Like obsessively, I watched it, finished the season, watched it again. It was just exciting to watch everything in that world. Like I remember there was a very, like a love story that came at that point. I didn't even like that film. And I was like, wow, it worked. Why do, why do people even like it? I saw it months later and I loved it. And I realized, oh, I was not in the mind space to watch that right, film at that time. Because you were in the Game of Thrones mindset. Yeah, I was in a different mindset, right? Uh, like, that's my, that's my personal watching. But every time there's a big film that's out there that I have to watch and I think I'll just land up there. And what about shows? What kind of shows do you watch? Is there a genre you prefer? Like, a, like the first show I actually watched, like I binged and I didn't even know the concept that you could binge like this. Yeah was a show called 24 and on DVDs, right? Uh, I just watched it in the basement, like my basement in my house had that TV, which nobody in the house knew how long you were up and stuff. I just watched it some 14, 16 hours straight or something. I was just like, what is this? Like, who makes these kind of things? Are they allowed to make these kind of things, right? Because <laughs> this is the one a... Anil remade then. Yes, yes. yes. The, the original, the key for yes, Yeah. Watch. Now, and then you started watching season two. It just was... Like you did, I did nothing yeah. in that week, in those 10 days. I was just sleepy throughout because I never slept through the day. Like it was just bad scene. Uh, and then uh, like my uncle always had American television. It's like my dad and Venki both grew up and studied in America. Mm -hmm. So they came back with American television, uh, VHS and all of that. So there were always sitcoms that we watched like as binges, but they were very easy watches. Mm -hmm. This serious stuff started with 24 for me for sure. And uh, then I started, then I watched The Sopranos, which was really, really cool. It's one of the coolest things I've seen in that time coming. I still think it's probably one of the top few shows that I've seen. Uh, these, these were the real binge ones. And then after that, in India, when did we really start it? Like, was Sacred, Sacred Games. Games, 100%. Yeah. Sacred Games season one was when you're like, wow, this is, like, you can do cool things in India now. Yeah. Like, yeah. that was the first time. That license came up. Uh, Mirzapur was something I was really impressed with. Even before I met Karan or knew him, I said, okay, this is cool. Family Man 1 and 2 were really phenomenal. And yeah. Raj and DK, I think, are really cool filmmakers. Yeah. So these were the, like the first in, scam or something I loved. Uh, like, I just feel like you can tell so much of a different story just being here. Yeah. And I got that experience first and finally. So I just feel like now I'll do more shows. <laughs> So, do you now, Rana, find yourself <coughs> doing this kind of 14-hour binge ki ab now those days are over? See, like now I'm very scared to do it, right? Why? Like suddenly everything changes, your whole week you're not working, you're like tired as hell and you're like this <laughs> and you're getting to office like 2-3 hours late because you didn't sleep all night. So, I just be very careful when I'm doing it and uh, when I do it, I just make sure that whole day I'm doing nothing but just watching it. 
Right. Like, so did what's the last show you did this for? Like, what's a really recent one? Beef, I did that for. Right. Because on it, Netflix. Yeah, on Netflix. It was fun. It was simple, but yet it had so much story being engaged. Uh, I did that with Peaky Blinders a lot. Uh, I think two, twice over. I think I watched Peaky Blinders. Uh, what else is a? That's like, really committed. You're rewatching shows. Yeah, because there's so much information in it, you yeah. lose it in one go. Yeah. Like there's no chance, or at least my brain doesn't register. All. Like like second time, I was like, wow, the Idarian saw this happen, right? So that I I enjoy rewatching stuff. Yeah. Like the Narcos, I rewatched season one. I rewatched a lot. Uh, Game of Thrones, of course, that's something that you will always have some big affiliation with because it just was like that epic adventure that House was. House of Dragons. Not as much of Game of Thrones. You get into it much slower. Yeah. Or like sometimes first time there's some things will have an impact, right? And that same thing doesn't work the second time, even if it's done better also. Mm -hmm. So I think Game of Thrones was that it opened you to a new genre, new kind of people, new kind of wildness. Yeah. So I think that was something that, uh, and I was also seeing it during Bahubali. So you just were watching that and doing that. Just and fed Bhalal Devas. Yeah. Anger, yeah. his all of it, his violence, so, everything. And that's the first time we saw that wild, ferocious yeah. side of uh, history in a very gruesome way, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that was fun. So, what's the last Indian show that made you jealous? Jealous? Ki ye mere ko karna tha. Oh, I don't know. Nothing like that. Nothing. Yet. You don't. You don't have those kind of. Uh, no, I no not. That's just not your vibe. That's not my vibe. Like. First, I think I just figured out what to do in shows apart from watching them. Now, like now, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, uh, I, no, I just feel there's a huge, huge potential for what we're wanting to create. Yeah. Uh, the next show that I'm working on apart from Rana Nehru is a show called The Lords of the Deccan, uh, which is actually a book that we licensed from, uh, uh, from a writer called Anirudh Kanisetti, and we're working with Sony on that. So that's something that's... Pretty How large. Exciting. Yeah, that's something that I'm pretty excited about. Yeah, yeah. Do you watch solo or do you watch with your wife? Depends. We we watch stuff together. What kind of stuff? And does she make that decision what you're watching? No, I, I think both of us do in some ways, and it's like depends on what time of the day and night what it is. It's like okay, here let's go. Huh. And I think at any given point between both of us, we'll have 15 shows that we started. So there's always a, what all didn't you watch? I saw this. Do you like this? Okay, let's go. So there's enough of that conversation with us and and I show solo also I, when I travel and stuff it's I watch quite a bit solo as well so since so many of you meaning all the Hyderabad heroes are friends is there like a whatsapp group where you're giving each other recommendations it's not a whatsapp group really but there's enough of us talking quite regularly really yeah there are enough whatsapp groups amongst us that have a lot of other things what going on what are these called by the way just random groups. I just Tell now. It'll be based on that time and energy. <laughs> it's, it'll just be very random, so I can't say many things. <laughs> See, like, you should also understand we're actors, are actually normal guys. And what normal stupid things people do, we also do. Correct. So it'll be one of those only. Correct. <laughs> Correct. So, like, what? Like, what's a show you would recommend to Charan? Or you have recommended to Charan? I think uh, Game of Thrones and Peaky Blinders was something that everyone was either watching together or watching at the same time or re-watching in some ways. Yeah. Uh, now, in the last few months, actually, there's been a lot more discussion amongst, whether it's friends, peers, whatever it is, in the reality space, documentaries that are now shot really brilliantly. Like, I used to watch a lot of global documentaries earlier, and to me, that was a way of, it was education at the same time, a entertainment in yeah. some ways where I know all of the Romans much more than I ever learned in school <laughs> just because I watched Romans sure. right uh, I know the story of African queens like this is stuff that you are not taught anyways you are it's very hard to come across this information and I was really happy when Selva made Veerappan Hunt for Veerappan I thought that was a really good documentary coming out of India in that sense and I just feel there's sometimes we take some real stories and made, make them really bad films uh, and I feel like if they're supposed to be told in this format, uh, stick to documentaries. Stick to documentaries. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Is there any other show, Rana, that you would want to remake? Like, Rana was a remake of yes, Radon. Yeah.
like the reason first i picked an adaptation over a original is because i thought we didn't know how to read one <laughs> Because we were writing, I'm like, is this how long a show goes? Like everyone in the office was blank. I said, let's just watch, and if it's cool, let's just figure out. Let's just make. do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So at least we start somewhere, right? Correct. Uh, what is the show that I'd want to do? Wow, there's that's interesting. Like just that in my head when you ask that question, I know a lot of rights are not available. I know all of this is there. Like, that's fine. <laughs> hey, this is just a wish list. Oh, just a wish list. Uh -huh. It's just a wish like, list. Let's make a nice one. Let's yeah, yeah. If you could. If you were able to adapt suits well in India and create something that is lobbyist, I think that's something that uh, generally lobbyist in India is so dramatic because it's at that cusp of a moment and in India cases are very, very different from what happens in the West. You can dwell in much deeper, uh, get into different cultural nuances of the country through law. I feel that's something that not not the adaptation of suits, but something in that direction yep. with law is something that really want to explore. Mm, mm. Is there a film that has shaped you as an actor? I think m what I am is a sum of all the films that I've done in some ways. Done or seen? Is there a film you've seen that really kind of Star impacted? Wars. Star, Star Wars. Wars. That's like, the one. That's the biggest impact of my life. <laughs> yeah. It's like, who? what happened here? Yeah. Yeah. That's hands down the most impactful. Film, George Lucas is the most impactful filmmaker. Darth Vader is the most impactful character across the board. And is there a watching ritual? Like, do you have a snack or is there a space where you, you know, go to for most of your content? Nothing. I just like the bigger the screen, the better it is because I can't see it too well. <laughs> phone, I don't do at all. Huh. Uh, it's no watching on the phone? No, no. It's slightly iPad or bigger mm. is huh. what I do. And is there a film or show that you are currently recommending to people? Film, there's just so many cool commercial films. You should watch Jailer, you should watch Jawan, you should watch Gadar, you should watch all these films. Uh, and uh, a show, what would I recommend in the recent one? I, I definitely recommend Beef to a lot of people, which is interesting, but it might be towards some people's liking only. Yeah. Okay, last segment, it's three reasons with Dana. Okay. Three reasons why Nena should have picked Vikram in Ye Jawani Hai Diwani. Hey, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of question is that? <laughs> First of all, are, like, there, are there any reasons you can come up with? See, the only thing I can think of that day is just randomly I and call him and say, hey, you'll do this or what? I said, yeah, okay, cool. So said, okay, let's go to Jaipur. And then I landed there and we were writing the, he was writing the scene then and there and then we shot and I flew back that night. Like, <laughs> So, you're not involved in ye kyu pick hua, ye kyu No, pick nothing. Hua? I just land. He said, hey, you'll do this or what? I think some actor said no to him or something. And then I was around. We were in Mehbub. said, will you do this? I said, yeah, sure, come, let's go. <laughs> That's how it happened. <laughs> okay. Three reasons why Bhalal Deva should have been the sort of long-term ruler in Bahubali. We have a hashtag, justice for Bhalal Deva. But who else is the long-term ruler in Mahishmati? I mean... He ruled, he, did, he ruled for a very short, like 15 minutes or 5 minutes of the climax, you saw him rule. The rest of the film, I was ruling anyways. That's right. In that so three hours of... Six, sorry for me. In your six hours of viewing, five hours, I was king. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. See? Well done. Three reasons why Shah Rukh Khan might call Rana Naidu. Uh, but I guess he has enough Ranas or... Anybody at that stage there would have Rana Naidu. This is India. Right. Maybe to control his fans in a good way. In Though a Rana's, good way? yeah, Rana's, uh, you know, liable to do something very scary or, with that bat. Or, or just say, just get get me more South Indian directors. <laughs> See, it's that could be a possibility. Right? That could be a possibility. Like, Rana, just line them up for just me. Just line them up for me. So sure. <laughs> then I'll be around Hyderabad, Chennai, Kerala. Just say, here you go. This is the ones. <laughs> Okay, and three reasons why Amar Chitrakatha has the potential to become India's own cinematic universe. Well, it was a universe far that created our existence in some ways. Uh, like these stories didn't need a book, a comic, or they were told to people and they lasted beyond time that we know. Uh, and the beauty is at the end of any of these Vedas, it is, it's ever evolving where here you go, if you understood this, it's now your job to continue this further and learn. So I think, like every time we try to like 
take in ACK, we try to do these, connect these cinematic universes and others. We're like, it's already a connected story. What are you doing? Tell me to this. <laughs> we just have to find a nice way to tell it, right? Yeah. I think it's, if you take what is India, right, as a whole, is storytelling. That's the only thing that puts all of us together uh, in the, and has put us together from time memorial in that sense. And today we have many things that divide us, whether it's language, whether it's politics, whether it's what you food eat, what you eat, what you don't. But these are stories that will unite us really as one single nation. And I think uh, it's just about waiting to happen. We just have to do it nicely. And I feel like Amar Chitrakata is the only brand that has lasted. See, it's important also for the brand to last uh, certain journeys, certain generations and find the right thing. Like if you take the journey of Disney from where it was to where it was down and then it came back up. And today what Disney is is completely different from uh, what we would have viewed them as children, right? So I think ACK has taken those heart deep burns when publishing really went out of fashion, then brought it back, newer investors, newer business uh, environments. I think all it, it's all of it. It's close to its uh, 60 years. And I think mm -hmm. by, that, by the time that hits that number, you will see the cinematic universe out. Really? Yeah, yeah for sure. Well, it's going to be amazing, Ran. I can't wait to see it. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Many years ago, there was a film called Delhi Delhi mm. that was made all English. A very successful film. I just didn't understand why people didn't make any more films like that. Yeah. Nobody actually greenlights them, nobody commissions them. Like, take for English an example. I feel like English can become a different industry in India. Yeah. We are more English speakers than anywhere on the planet. Now, which means we are bigger than Hollywood, we are bigger than everybody, just purely English speaking. Correct. And that can be a certain kind of it cinema. It can be a certain kind of cinema and I think we should embrace that also.